Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Biohacking Beauty Podcast. Today, I am here with the incredible Rachel Varga. Rachel is one of the first to blend the Western approaches to skincare and rejuvenation, uh, rejuvenation, functional insights, and biohacking optimization strategies by blending the best of these worlds and observing what her most radiant patients are doing, she will also help guide you in your path to healthy skin and vibrancy for uh, many years. Rachel is a double board cert certified aesthetic nurse, specializing uh, a specialist uh, since two 2011 with over 20,000 procedures performed. And she's also a host of a top 20 podcast, the Rachel Varga podcast, an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses, celebrity skin expert featured by Dave Asprey, JJ Virgin, and uh, more. Rachel is an international speaker and a five-time academically published award-winning author in the fields of regenerative and aesthetic nursing, as well as an executive board member and peer reviewer for the US-based Plastic and Aesthetic Nursing Journal and a regular contributor to the UK-based Journal of Aesthetic Nursing. Rachel is one of the first to combine functional slowing, slowing aging techniques, biohacking, and modern medical aesthetics by teaching us how to tune into what the skin is telling us about our internal health and what to do about it. Through education, it's through education on at-home non-toxic skincare, hair care, derma rolling, in-clinic skin rejuvenation, and biohacking, Rachel helps inspire others with her unique toolkit to slow cellular aging and enhance radiance using her holistic science of beauty method at rachelvarga.ca. We, of course, have had her before on the podcast, and she's an incredible uh, friend and guest. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about her latest paper, which is looking at how environmental stressors and toxins uh, contribute to skin aging and overall decline in skin appearance and what we can do about it. Uh, this is going to be the first of two podcasts that we dedicate to her uh, work and to the solutions that she offers. And I'm very excited to share it with all of you. Uh, before we dive into today's into our conversation today, I first want to um, remind you that it would mean the world to us if you subscribed to today's episode. Not only that it will improve, um, you know, you will know about any new episode that's coming out. It will also uh, greatly help us uh, in sharing the, the word of this podcast with other people. And if you are feeling very generous, um, I would love it, and we would love it here at Yangus, if you could take two seconds out of your day to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Even one word, uh, a one-word review would be amazing. Your rating and reviews greatly helps with the growth of the podcast, which helps us educate more people. And now, let's get into our conversation with Rachel Varga. All right, Rachel Varga, welcome back to the Biohacking Beauty Podcast. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you, Amitai. I love spending time with you, love what you're doing, love the, the, the content you're sharing, and I look forward to sharing some new research that yeah. I have publishing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I had to have you back on. Um, and, and I, you know, I basically I said, you know, Rachel, we got to do it as soon as possible because, um, obviously you as a person are very aligned with what we we're doing here at Young Goose. And, and I mean, without knowing of each other, we, we have a very, we've had very similar, uh, ways of thinking about biohacking, beauty, whatever that is, um, health optimization in the past. And then we found each other and kind of found out that we're very much aligned um, and yet again here it happens we've been talking a lot about what we call extrinsic aging aging that is driven from the outside and here comes the great Rachel Varga and, and publishes a 21 page uh, paper about it <laughs> yeah. so I just had to have you on 
and talk about it a little bit. So what made you what made you write this? What what kind of what's the uh, thought process that, that got you to write a paper on it? Yes, well, the impetus for writing this paper is to add more information to those. There's actually two kind of groups that this paper is geared towards. Mm -hmm. The first one is to allow biohackers to understand how environmental toxins impact the skin, mm -hmm. whether that's through air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, yeast, fungi, parasites, mold, food toxins, and also the spiritual elements mm -hmm. to being a human all impact the skin aging. So there's tons of references. It's 21 pages. It's it's open source, so anyone can read it. That's how I designed the paper to be published. Mm -hmm. And we're using all this technology like air purifiers, water purifiers, electromagnetic radiation, wireless communication radiation mitigation options, right? So mm -hmm. right now I'm business on top. I have my silver pants on down below to protect my organs and legs while I work so that my blood flows better. And then there's other detoxes and cleanses and food optimization test kits that we can take. And I wanted to expand on why this is important for the skin because we mm -hmm. understand metabolic improvements, cellular wellness, but how do these strategies impact the skin? So this is really what this paper is about. And then the other side, the other angle that I have in this paper is to really raise the bar in dermatology, cosmetic dermatology, plastic surgery, aesthetic medicine for practitioners, doctors, and nurses so that they are on a similar level with their patient intakes and assessment and evaluation, mm -hmm. not just looking at the skin, uh, just surface level, but really getting a sense of what their patient may be going through and how they can essentially notice things in their lifestyle by the concept of understanding the oxidative stress status, mm -hmm. which is something that I refer to as the toxic bucket theory. If this toxic bucket is full, and you go and receive a rejuvenation treatment, whether it's a chemical peel, a laser treatment for pigmentation, laser resurfacing, or injectable, or surgery, or body contouring. If your oxidative stress status is maxed out, your toxic bucket is full, you're going to have delayed healing, and you're likely going to have a higher chance of adverse events. So it's a mm -hmm. safety piece, and it's also to get fellow aesthetic practitioners to have a more in-depth patient intake and assessment and consultation to yeah. be more aligned with what the top longevity and functional practices are doing across the globe, especially in different pockets in the United States, where they're really looking at the oxidative stress levels. And then they're incorporating things like peptides and exosomes and stem cells into their repertoire. So it's talking about those things as well to bring more of an awareness, because honestly, I think that all of that is really the future of biohacking our beauty and becoming our healthiest, most radiant and high vibe selves. Yeah, it's super, super, super cool. Uh, I, I think we are not talking, a, we're not talking enough about that dichotomy between like having to have some oxidative stress, inflammation, you know, we can think of a, a bunch of other things that a small amount of them is necessary. Is it, it's, it's always there and it has a, 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 a function, I mean, most of the benefits we're going to get from like red light therapy, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, um, nano V, I mean, uh, infrared sauna is accompanied by more oxidative stress, more inflammation. But the problem, you know, coming out of your paper and, and in general, the problem is, is when it becomes not acute, but, but chronic, when it accumulates in our body, just has no ability to, to, recover from it to kind of to handle it right yes the body instead of regeneration and reparation mm -hmm. it is constantly addressing oxidative stress and damage from free radicals mm -hmm. in air water lighting electromagnetics organisms and of course in our foods mm -hmm. and also psychologically i did a, a recent show on trauma and the skin 
And when people go through stressful times, that's actually when I advise to not receive rejuvenation because your body's already dealing with moving energy mm -hmm. and moving through traumas. And for myself going through completely changing my life, all for the better. It's funny, yeah. I, I cleared parasites mm -hmm. from last March to December, and then I started to think and see things more clearly and just knew I had to change things up. And in fact, I had validation that I made the, the correct decision because the situation I was in before, including the home, I had a toxin result. Oh, wow. I received the results back and I had exposure to three different types of mold. Now, because I've been doing biohacking for many years, I've been, you know, friends with Dave, the godfather of biohacking since, you know, 2017. And so I started to observe that these individuals who took the time to mitigate these environmental toxic exposures were healing rapidly and those that are really stressed out you know they're watching things on the news all the time their brains are essentially scrambled uh, mm -hmm. with what's going on and they just have a, a lower pain threshold and they don't get as powerful outcomes so it really took my clinical observation working with different individuals since 2011 over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures to really see this subset of clients that would come to see me internationally right all over the all over the world and mm -hmm. now of course i do that more online to serve people everywhere because everyone deserves this information it was becoming very apparent to me that those who lived a more grounded lifestyle had a life that was more focused on a family unit more traditional way of living and had a spiritual um, element in their lives were coming to me at more mature ages Mm -hmm. And they just have this inner light, this inner sparkle, which is also what led me down to the study of radiance. And you can actually measure radiance in our human biofield and blood flow to our skin. That's incredible. Yeah, um, couldn't agree more. Um, that's the entire you know premise to people having auras or or whatever other cultures are going to describe it. It's really our emission of of infrared right this is the uh it, it's quantifiable so it's very interesting um so you you went down that path of finding out how our bodies deal with toxins what what's the impact on the skin um what are some of the things that were maybe that you didn't know before that that you've learned um even after you know twenty thousand aesthetic procedures done really if leading figure in translating biohacking to skin health what are some of the things that even you have learned <laughs> great well we can essentially break it down i can give you all a walkthrough yeah. of this massive academic paper these poor peer reviewers i mean typically when i peer review articles they're a couple pages long mm -hmm. but for a peer reviewer to go through a 20 page article with three pages of references <laughs> takes a little bit of time so thank you to the the team members at mm -hmm. the journal let's break it down and walk through the different key aspects of environmental toxin triggers which is air water lighting electromagnetics pathogens food mm -hmm. also um, psychological and emotional so where shall we start should we start with air let's go let's let's air it out <laughs> I love Amatek. All right, so with the air, the air is actually how we tend to get the most impact from heavy metals, believe it or not. So mm -hmm. this comes from automobile emissions, from say, if you live near some type of mine where all this dust is getting picked up, say there's you know a, a mine for different type of stone, uh, all these particulates get released in the air. Also pollen. Believe it or not, with the spring and summer seasons, one of the reasons why I like to talk about seasonal skin and rejuvenation uh, very specifically 
is because a lot of times if your oxidative stress status or toxic bucket is a little too full, you're going to have seasonal allergies impact you even more. Mm -hmm. So the air is really um, a huge contributing factor to heavy metal toxicity. So this is why air purifiers are so important to have in your home, your workplace, where you're sleeping, in your main living area when you're cooking to avoid and reduce your exposure to volatile organic compounds. So when you're cooking and you might smell a little bit of smoke or things like that, if you have a really good air purifier in your kitchen, it will be able to reduce your exposure that way. Most homes also have mold. So just assume it's in your home. I don't care how new it is. In fact, if it's a new building, it's gonna be off gassing. And so just, just assume there's stuff in the air and that's why cleansing the skin is so important. And I've always been such a fan of double cleansing before bed. So your first cleanse is getting rid of dirt, debris, pollution, cosmetic creams, makeup, and then your second cleanse is actually cleansing the skin. In fact, I always shower or bathe before bed just to get everything off my skin. And last night I actually slept with a, a body chemical peel, which is fantastic. <laughs> so my skin is extra smooth, especially getting ready for these seasons where we're showing off our arms and legs a little bit more. There's fantastic, super clean, non-toxic products that we can do at home. Mm -hmm. So that's the main thing that we get through the air is heavy metals and air purification is key. And the eyes on the face are highly metabolic structure. So if you're noticing things like dry eye, which affects 50% of the population, mm -hmm. Um, you also want to think about your electromagnetic exposure because the research is out that EMFs do impact the eyes and can precipitate uh, eye disease. My wow. girlfriend who's turning 50 already has cataracts and what is she doing? She's working on her computer all day, every day and not using blue light blocking lenses. Mm -hmm. She has prescription ones with a little coating, but that's not adequate. You need to use some really sophisticated lenses, which, you know, we have mutual friends that have great companies that do that. Mm -hmm. So yes, air. We needed to breathe. We just want it to be as pure as possible. So living a lifestyle where you are in nature and you are breathing in all of these beautiful organic compounds, uh, terpenes that the trees are giving off is so incredibly healing for not only your eyes and just your heart and your body for being in that environment. Uh, it's also really good for you to breathe in. Yeah. You've probably heard of forest bathing. This has been mm -hmm. studied forever. Why does it make people feel better? It's because of the grounding component and you're also inhaling really beautiful compounds that the plants are giving off. Yeah, I mean, you know, machines such as, you know, uh, Nano V, Fera Air, um, um, I mean, there are a bunch of other companies that are doing this. They basically are, you know, going back and kind of back engineering how aerosolized, you know, forest air is being created and then, you know, exposing you to it if you're not, if you're, if you're not in, in the middle of the forest, right? So there are, there are documented benefits as far as the skin is concerned and the rest of your body to doing that. Yeah, I love that. And the more toxins we get exposed to, the higher rates of things like hyperpigmentation, melasma, and acne, acne scarring, fine lines, wrinkles, and also the um, higher opportunity to develop things like eczema, mm -hmm. psoriasis, rashes, all of those things. So mm -hmm. this is a really great episode we're about to yeah. continue to Okay. Yeah. So okay. So we've 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 talked about um, uh, the air, and and it seems like the easiest solution is just making sure that we are cleansing correctly. And you talked about double cleansing. Is there a time period? So since we have actives in our adaptogenic cleanser, we really want people to to uh, to not take it off for a while for you know we say 10 seconds but i leave it on for two minutes is there a time period that you like to leave on your cleansers before you you take them off yeah that's that's a great question i've actually never had anyone ask me and, and i'm thinking to how i do my skincare routine as well and i still want to do that initial cleanse just get everything off and then mm -hmm. yes leaving on the second cleanse for just a little while longer so the actives can penetrate 
yeah, leaving it on for anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes, I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. As well as adding areas like the upper back, if some of you are dealing with back knee, this mm -hmm. is a great time of year to start clearing that up so that you can wear and show off your, your body and your beautiful skin uh, with more confidence. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, to, to connect to what you're saying, um, in our Western society, it might be that our face, neck, uh, kind of cleavage area, if you would, is a sign of, of, of um, you know, of, of uh, sexual health or health in general. Totally. But if we look at, you know, uh, Japanese society, um, you know, a few hundreds of years ago, it was actually the, the upper back and your, and the, and your neck that were the cleavage of the time, right? It's your back court. body. The back yeah. is a huge surface area to show off. Exactly, yeah. So there must be some subconscious component there as well, right? There must be something that that communicates communicates virality. Uh, so we wanna we wanna have a good good presentable back body as well. Yes, absolutely. And when we're looking for partners, you're going to want to look for someone who is looking vital and is uh -huh. looking radiant and you're having positive emotional exchanges with. They're in a positive emotional state. So when you reduce your toxins on all of these aspects, your brain is also going to be functioning better. Yeah. The brain is the master control center for everything else in the body. When your brain is working properly, your skin will have better blood flow, better nutrient delivery, your hormones will be better balanced. So what I find with clients is a lot of them are dealing with thyroid issues and hormonal imbalances. And then I take one look at the skincare that they're using and they're exposed to parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes and fragrances and everything that they're using. Yeah. And then I kindly say, well, I think that we have come to a daily contributing factor that is resulting in imbalances. So this is an easy thing for us to clear up and yeah. get you on better, you know, a better track. And it's yeah. all about looking like our best versions as well to attract a partner, to attract excellent friendships and uh, business colleagues. Would you be more inclined to do business or be in a relationship with someone who appeared to be well taken care of and healthy or would you rather be in relationship personally and professionally with someone who has obvious skin irritations skin rashes poor grooming because mm -hmm. that can give insight as to what's going on uh, mentally and intellectually as well yeah and uh, obviously we talk a lot about it and how clearing senescent cells in the skin can then translate to better brain health and overall body health uh, stress etc what i would say as well is uh, when we talk about you know heavy metals and and air pollutants uh interacting with the skin and then the rest of our body that is why it's so important to use products that are let's say formulated well and responsibly and not in someone's maybe in someone's kitchen too but they have to know very well what they're doing it's if it's in their kitchen because what you're going to create is a skin that is permeable a, what we call leaky skin right and that is a major component of you know your skin in your skin's inability to stop those toxins from absorbing um and even you know how well you shed your skin which also get you we, you know we kind of circle back into into cortisol levels and stress how well you shed your skin would also allow you to rid your skin or or your body of those toxins even if they have been attached to your skin so it's all kind of a kind of a ferris wheel if you will of, of cause and effect okay but but what about so we talked about air what's the next uh topic in that in that order yes and i'm also excited to share with you let's save this to the end of the episode yeah. some of my best strategies to detox all these things yeah fantastic. absolutely when it comes to water what i found really interesting in my research and also through my personal toxin reports was that um, certain things were high and I was like, what? I don't, I'm, I don't have a lot of exposure to these things. So then what, what I started to learn was the pipes that carry your water from the water treatment plant to your home. A lot of them have been there for quite some time. There's 
biofilms in the water piping, different microorganisms, different deposits of, again, heavy metals and toxins. And then PVC piping emits phthalates. Mm -hmm. So phthalates are a hormone dysregulator. That's why it's removed from skincare. Mm -hmm. And that's why having water purification with everything that you're doing, if you can have a whole home water purification system, that's ideal. The fridge or the fridge filter or the Brita filter isn't going to cut it. You want to either have reverse osmosis or distilled water. Now yeah. with my background in general chemistry, organic chemistry and biochemistry, we always used glass and we always used distilled water. So distilled water is great. And then of course, remineralize it yeah. but from everything from bathing your body, cooking, washing your dishes. If you can simply limit your exposure as much as possible, maybe start with a counter top reverse osmosis water unit for a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Maybe start with a shower filter for, you know, a hundred, one or two hundred dollars, not drinking out of plastic water bottles. So when it comes to water, we want to essentially start with the basics, not drinking out of plastic water bottles, drinking your reverse osmosis or distilled water as often as possible. When you're out at a restaurant, don't drink the water that they give you because that's usually tap water anyways. Mm -hmm. Ask for a bottle of sparkling Pellegrino and then you're getting your minerals at the same time travel with water i can't stand the taste when i'm at certain events and you know they give you these bottles of water the taste of the plastic and all the leaching of the bpas in the water is just awful and um because i take the time to be so pure i can notice when mm -hmm. something has a toxin um, also being highly empathic, notice all sorts of things, um, you know, not just the, the environmental toxins, but also the emotional and spiritual toxins that can happen. Um, yeah. and that's why when we go through times of stress or trauma, the skin usually displays us and you got to move that energy. You have to do that deep work so that it doesn't get lodged in your body because your cells will keep score. And this is where, you know, deep psychological, emotional work comes in. Yeah. And then you're a more lighter version of you. Cause I love to talk about how we can be more radiant and high vibe. So that's a huge component. Yeah. So simply purifying your water, remineralizing it, if you're cooking, cleaning, bathing, when you're out and about, bring your own water or go for a, um, you know, glass type of mineralized water at a restaurant are great tips. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and, um, I could, I, I would also could add to that if you are, you know, traveling and you cannot take your, your water from place to place, then, you know, make sure that the water that you're buying, obviously, that's just, that is something that you did say, but, uh, people normally tend to give themselves a lot of discounts when they're traveling. Uh, just buy, buy water that's already in, in uh, glass, you know, uh, let's say, you know, they took your, your bottle in the airport or something. These small things are super, super important. Okay. So we have water. What, what's, what's next? You can also structure your water too. So there's all yes. these layers to biohacking. Start with the basics, start with purification and then get fancy uh -huh. with the additions like the ozone and other beautiful organic compounds that we can inhale. Structuring your water is also something that I've done. And I did a little household study with this. Structured water does taste smoother uh -huh. and please don't make my mistake of drinking beautiful spring and river and stream and waterfall water, which I did for far too long as an outdoor enthusiast, um, you know, getting my cold plunging in nature on the West coast here where the water is very cold and you got to watch out for those microorganisms and yes. parasites as well. <laughs> don't <Yeah>. do that. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, okay, so 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 water definitely is, is a big component, and, and it is a component that that's discussed a lot on a, on a on a surface level, uh, no pun intended. When when we talk about skin health, etc. And uh, okay, so 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 we have our air down, we have our water down. What's what's what else? 
electromagnetics, electromagnetic frequencies, and also wireless communication devices. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like I said, I'm wearing silver pants, you know, business on top with my beautiful silk blouse and my <laughs> silver pants actually, it actually looks kind of cute. Mm -hmm. And electromagnetic mitigation for skin health and slowing aging is imperative. We actually have seen in the published literature, symptomology overlap between a specific virus and wireless radiation exposure. Mm -hmm. And I started to see that in 2020, 2021, through a very well-known researcher, Dr. Beverly Rubick, R-U-B-I-K. Mm -hmm. And I referenced a few of her papers in my paper. And she's actually worked with some of the biohacking tech out there to analyze the changes on the blood after exposure to different technologies to get the blood behaving properly. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, what does wireless radiation which includes your wireless phone that you have in your home, which is just as bad as your router, yeah. as well as electromagnetic frequencies, anything Bluetooth, you know, these brand new fancy electric cars. People get these cars and get them for their families and they have their baby sitting in the back. And these vehicles are such high emitters of electromagnetic frequency. So driving an older vehicle, you've seen my Land Rover. It's a mm -hmm. beast. It's a four by four machine. It is an analog machine. So when yeah. I turn the key, it responds to me as opposed to a digital machine like our computers, like our cell phones that are constantly wanting to be interacted with. So they're always on. They're yeah. simply always on to wait for you to respond to it. So what this does, what these frequencies do to the blood as well as the electrical frequencies in the home sine waves and all these things, they're at a certain wavelength in our home with um, poorly grounded or poorly insulated wiring in the home that also affect the body. That's why mm -hmm. it's great to have what's called a kill switch at night to turn as much of the electricity off in the home while you're sleeping. So essentially while you're sleeping, you can get a break with your blood. So all these people that have, not all of them, obviously I can never make blanket claims like that, mm -hmm. but people who are dealing with brain fog, who have a lack of energy, uh, their skin is dull and flat, they have things like dry eye and ocular irritation, as well as a um, not, not really the best brain of function, right? Uh -huh. They have difficulty with forming words and forming sentences because their body isn't getting great blood flow. So when we have red blood cells in their form that they want to behave in, they're nice circular red cells with really smooth edges. And they are highly electromagnetic. Everything in our body, hormones, peptides, are all mediated through electromagnetic interactions. So with red blood cells, what we want them to do is, and how they want to behave simply, is they want to basically be uh, come in contact, then repel. Come in contact, then repel, okay? Now, what happens if we're on our phone for as little as five minutes? So that's why, you know, using, don't use those AirPods, those wireless mm -hmm. headsets. Don't hold your phone to your head. Use instead a speaker option, or I actually have air tube headsets. So mm -hmm. the sound going to my ears isn't digital. It's actually acoustic. It's uh, transformed. Now, when we're on our phone for as little as five minutes, those red blood cells start to stick together. And yeah. what happens under the microscope, you can visualize this. If you've ever gone to a practitioner, they take a little you know, sample of your blood, put it under the electron microscope, or whatever kind of technology they have. They look at it under the slide and they see things like rouleau, which are chains of red blood cells sticking together, which uh, essentially look like rolls of a coin. That's why it's called rouleau. And then you get all these clotting factors happening between these chains of rouleau. So what happens to your blood when you're on your devices for as little as five minutes is your blood does not move as efficiently and smoothly as we would like. So what this ha what the, the the outcome of this is poor blood flow. Okay, mm -hmm. so men are probably thinking, oh, oh boy, <laughs> blood flow. 
<laughs> right? But Thinking we also we better get that uh, that uh, EMF shielding underwear. <laughs> yeah, or you know, peptides like PT one forty one help as yeah. well. So I've so I've heard. <laughs> now, and I'm making you laugh because when you find something funny, you're actually going to integrate the information much better. Mm -hmm. So essentially, when our blood is not grounded, we're inside too much, we haven't made contact with the earth, we're on our devices, we're on Zoom calls all day long. This is hello, modern living. We just have yeah. to know how to mitigate it. So we've got to biohack that. Yeah. Your blood will not flow as well to your different organs. Hello, the skin being the largest organ. Hello, the brain being the master control center. You will also have a reduction in the uptake of metabolic waste products, CO2. Your body actually won't be detoxing things regularly through the liver, through the kidneys as efficiently. Mm -hmm. So that's why keeping your phone in a Faraday pouch, checking it when you want to check it, not wearing trackers, the Fitbits and all these things, they actually go on your wrist, right on your heart mm -hmm. meridian. Not great, not to mention it's always going to pull you out of the present moment when you're in conversation with people. Yeah. In my personal opinion, I am no longer a fan of wearing biohacking wearables. And there's mm -hmm. a few reasons for this. Not only from the Bluetooth electromagnetic perspective, but also for the, unfortunately, for the option for these companies to actually potentially send you signals. Yeah. And I have been a fan of reading, you know, different spy novels and espionage novels for years. I started to clue into the fact that a lot of biohacking tech and health technologies come from the military and come from space. Yeah. And I was listening to a lecture. Uh, this was, I think, about five or six years ago. And this agency hired a consultant to say, what threats do we need to worry about in 10, 20 years. The consultant said, we can't predict that far, but we can predict in about five years. And right now, uh, a French company has the ability to actually be able to send or receive signals to mice while they sleep so they forget how to do a maze when they wake up. Wow. This is men in black stuff situation. So he was postulating that uh, in France, there would be a company that would be able to have the ability to send and receive signals to people while they sleep. Five years after that, when this stuff was predicted to be on the market, a French wearable tracker company came out. Yeah. So these are just things to be aware of. You may be getting great content and data for tracking your health metrics, but just have an awareness that sometimes these companies get bought and sold to the highest bidder. We've seen that with a few other biohacking wearables. If you're going to wear the Aura Ring, simply turn it on airplane mode while you're wearing it, dock it, check your data that way. That's why it's so important to know who these CEOs and founders are of these companies, which is why Amitai, you and I, we have such an advantage. Yeah. We get to hop on a call with people and really get a sense, especially as empaths, who they are, what they stand for, what their values are, or if they're in it to pump themselves up and make a lot of money and then sell the technology to the highest bidder. So there's a lot of really interesting things I'm noticing in the biohacking space with certain wearables. So, you know, really just listen to people who are behind the companies and in interviews, make that judgment for yourself. Yeah. I actually stopped wearing trackers. I'll use something like the eight sleep to monitor my sleep. And then I'll be sleeping in EMF clothing or EMF blankets to mitigate uh, exposure that way. But this is what I would personally consider electromagnetic radiation to be the smoking of our generation agreed yeah definitely and i do do want to get to the uh to us meeting you know to, to talking about how we how we mitigate some of those effects i would like to say that you know specifically when we talk about emf and it, it interacting with the skin it does increase oxidative stress which we talked about um, and it, not only increasing oxidative stress, it actually also damages our cellular membrane. And when we looked at, you know, as a biohacking company, okay, we're going to make a sunscreen. Sun, shielding you from UV was our, not our least concern, but it was obviously the most rudimentary part of it. Uh, what we really wanted to do 
was to also help your skin deal with the effects of EMF or blue light or pollution, which we talked about before. These are the things that are more important in my eyes for over 50% of the population as far as protecting their skin from that uh, the, the extrinsic driver of aging, drivers of aging. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So we, we have... Uh, we have uh, the the electromagnetic uh, radiation. What what is another one that we should uh, care about? Yeah. So next we'll talk about organisms. But I would mm -hmm. just like to tip my hat to you, Amitai, because it's companies like you that are really doing your best with the utmost integrity working with science, working with different molecules that are really innovating the space, which is why I love being friends with you as well, because at the end of the day, we just want to help people, mm -hmm. okay? There's lots of people that make skincare companies out there, and they're just looking for a cheap way to formulate. And what we're seeing, and I'm sure you're seeing this as well in your work, are these huge manufacturers that were previously making relatively clean products to the masses. And then I hop on a consult with a client and then I see canola oil, I see hydrogenated vegetable oil now being included as an ingredient list, which shows that the quality of these mass produced companies are going down, which mm -hmm. sometimes can happen if the company's been bought. And then what happens is practitioners or the consumer aren't made aware of formulation changes and this is something I learned really early on in my career since 2011, working with practitioner grade skincare companies, is when a company gets bought or they're trying to improve their margins, they start using lower quality ingredients. Yeah. And that is playing out now in these mass produced skincare lines that I hate to say it, a number of my colleagues in the biohacking space and women's health are still promoting these products. And I think that if they knew that rancid seed oils were ingredients now being used, they would stop promoting those companies yeah. or they would continue promoting them because they get affiliate kickbacks. Just mm -hmm. really something yeah. um, you guys all need to know about this. That's why when you're thinking about consuming information and content from people always look them in the eyes and really make a judgment for yourself if this is someone that you want to learn from if you feel like you can trust them or they're in it just to make money with affiliate marketing that's a huge yeah. huge issue just jumping back to emfs in the skin what we actually see with air and electromagnetics and the skin is an improper cellular functioning, especially with the keratinocytes. And I get into the weeds on that in my paper. So that's why these things can contribute to diffuse redness, skin redness, oxidative stress from you know being on your device, eye irritation. That's why these things all happen is because reactive oxidative species are interacting with your cells and then causing damage. So yeah. there's so much we can do. So air, water, lighting, electro, Magnetics. Oh, we have to talk about lighting as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Blue I light. I think what we will do. Listen. I think what we will do because we will. We are. We are short on time, for for many reasons. We're gonna. We're gonna do it. A two part, uh, series because it's too too good of an information to glaze over. Um. So I wanna. Right. I wanna get get to where we get in about like five minutes. Sure. And then we're gonna uh, pick it up from there because the amount of, of actionable information we have here is invaluable. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's let's save blue light and yeast, fungi, parasites, and mold for a follow-up interview. I think that's yeah. perfect. Sounds great. So, so what, I would, what I would want to maybe talk about in five minutes, and we're going to obviously pick it up also in the next episode, is, as we said, not, not your entire uh, paper cook, or, or your entire life experience as far as like optimizing skin health can be summarized into a podcast, can be summarized into a paper, by the way, <laughs> right. uh, or summarized into a even one consult. I think it's important, especially if someone is, is emphasizing uh, looking good and feeling good, it's important to uh, go, go on a journey. And one of the best ways I like to go on a journey, I remember myself taking and understanding I don't know enough about leaky gut in like 2014 and taking Dr. Josh Axe's course on leaky gut. 
okay? Uh, so one of the most important things is to enroll yourself in structured uh, formats that you can digest, in, that digest information for you and then uh, make it actionable. And one of the, the, uh, the things I like the most in everything that you are doing is your seasonal um, uh, skin health courses. So, uh, you know, in the, in the last, you know, couple minutes that we have, I really would like to understand how can someone, what's the best time to enroll to, some, to your seasonal courses? And obviously, how can a, a listener do that? And we obviously have a little, a little uh, treat for people who are listening. Oh, thank you very much, Avin Hai, for those kind words. And yeah. right back at you. Yes. So you have the, the skincare, the rejuvenation. I've well over a decade learning about this stuff. What excites mm -hmm. me now is this biohacking, the environmental toxin stuff, longevity, slowing cellular aging, being our brightest, most high vibe versions. Now, with that, we do need to make shifts every season. So whether mm -hmm. it's winter, fall, spring, summer, um, at this point, we are gearing up. We're in spring. We're gearing up for summer. So yes, I have seasonal skin camp programs, which is actually where I share my tutorials. And I also share information on how you can optimize your routine, whether you're using the fantastic Young Goose skincare line, uh, how you can optimize your biohacking, hair, skin, nail supplements, basically what you can do at home, at home peels. I mentioned a body peel as well. Mm -hmm. Rejuvenation and how to actually use everything. I literally yeah. take my skin campers into my restroom and I show you exactly how to do everything as well as dermal rolling tutorials. I'm actually doing my next one next week. Wow. So that's that's what you get in the skin camp programs. It's that really behind the scenes, off the cuff, um, conversations, tutorials with me. And all of that is available at rachelvarga.ca. And we have a special gift for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyone who uh, takes our advice and uh, goes on a journey in one of those uh, skin camps, um, we have a special promo code for them, which is Young Goose, one word, all caps. And um, yeah, we, we, we highly recommend uh, educating yourself that way. In my opinion, that's the best way to educate yourself from home. Mm -hmm. I don't know why uh, anyone, in, nobody else is doing this uh, degree of information yeah. and insights. And yeah, there's also a free skincare checklist. So with your Young Goose products, it can just give you also a understanding of, you know, how to apply things mm -hmm. and what does what, what does an antioxidant serum do? What does a moisturizer do? So that's all at rachelvarka.ca, skincarechecklist.com. And I would love for everyone to listen to Amitai and our previous episode on the Rachel Varga podcast. I'm going through a little bit of a rebrand, so you can still yeah. find me as Rachel Varga, uh, but things will be expanding into more uh, ways to, you know, always be radiant and all these things. Fantastic. And, yeah, I love working with you, Amitai. It is. It is obviously one of the gifts of of. of being in the biohacking space, being in, in beauty as well, is to, to have met you and, and to, to work with you, Rachel. It's, it's uh, definitely something I look forward to every time we meet, like we've met uh, you know, a few months ago in, in Florida, and, and hopefully we'll have many more opportunities when we get you closer to us. Uh, this is something that I consider a privilege and a little bit of a surreal moment, right, coming from uh, R&D background, managing companies, it's, you never expect to meet the people that you then consume, that you consume their information. So it's a real treat. But Rachel, our, uh, as I said, we, we're going to cut it to a two, two episode to make sure that nothing is lost. So I want to appreciate everyone who's listening. I, want, I, I highly appreciate you for giving us uh, this, your, your valuable time. And uh, we'll take it from here in our in our next uh, episode. Thank you and my pleasure. Absolutely.